Uh, let's get to it, shall we? Here we go with the Matchroom Boxing main event. This is fight number one that we're handicapping. It is a junior welterweight contender showdown between England's Jack Catterall and Regis Progre of the United States. When last we saw Progre, let's be honest, 10 months ago, he got beaten decisively, smoked by Devin Haney, costing him his WBC belt at 140 pounds. All right, so he's got something to prove. Meantime, for Catterall, he would love to get another title shot after he lost controversially to the then undisputed 140 pound champ, Josh Taylor. Now follow the bouncing ball, Rayfield knows this. Catterall eventually beat Taylor in a rematch, so he's won some fights. This is the main event Saturday night for Matchroom Boxing. Catterall about a four to one favorite here. You see the over under is 10 and a half. Pro Gray again, a former world champion, a former two time world champion. All right, Dan, size it up and give me a prediction or two for this Jack Catterall Regis Pro Gray bout. Well, you covered a lot of the, the the ins and outs of the match in terms of where these guys have been. Uh, for the way I look at the match, TJ, is that uh, for for this weight class, 140 pounds, it's one of the better fights that could be made that's not a title fight, that does not involve one of the champions. And while none of the sanctioning bodies are calling this an official elimination fight or anything like that, in, in essence, it's like a de facto eliminator because the, the both of the guys have name value and name recognition among boxing fans. They've been at or near the top of the weight class for the last several years. And now they're fighting each other, both with uh, things to prove and, and, and accomplishments they'd still like to uh, to take care of in their careers. So you mentioned about Taylor, uh, obviously he suffered the, the very controversial uh, decision loss, a split decision loss to Josh Taylor back in 2022. That would have been uh, the undisputed, you know, would have made him the undisputed champion. Uh, and that was, you know, they had a lot of conversation about doing a rematch that was uh, postponed several times that got waylaid partly by injuries and and other conflicts with other fights and just a lot of things that happened sometimes in boxing that it just felt like they kept trying to reschedule, but they were trying to crawl out of a hole, but the, but the dirt kept falling in and they just couldn't get it all squared away. Now, finally, okay. yeah. finally, uh, and Catterall, by the way, it wasn't like he was out because he wanted to be. He ended up having, you know, a layoff. Uh, he changed promoters. He then won two fights and again, you know, in sort of nondescript sort of performances, including uh, defeating by decision the very ancient and archaic and one time outstanding, but no longer that level fighter in Jorge Linares, who had won titles in three weight classes. That would have been a great win a few years ago, but not, you know, the way it was this year. Anyway, finally, after that, they were able to put the rematch together again. And he went out there and he beat Josh Taylor. Uh, some might say Josh was a bit diminished. You know, he was coming off of the, you know, pretty one-sided loss to Tiafimo Lopez that cost him that title. So they met in a non-title fight. Uh, Josh Taylor feels like he should be the champion. So now he goes in this fight against Regis Progre. Uh, for Jack's purposes, it, it's going to be a hometown fight, essentially. You know, it's taking place in Manchester, England. He'll have the benefit of the hometown crowd. He lives, uh, you know, half an hour or so away from where they're fighting. Uh, Regis, so he, he, he needs to win the fight to not to prove himself because he's done that against Taylor, but to assure himself that he's still viable for a title shot, mandatory or otherwise, because he's going to be a name. He'll have put together another nice win on his resume with a victory against progress. So he's got, you know, to take that step. And I won't call this a stay busy fight. That's more than that, but it's, it's another kind of proving ground kind of fight for him in terms of Regis progress. Here's a guy that was once considered, you know, the, one of the top one or two fighters in the weight class. His his one previous loss had been a very disputed, very close, outstanding fight against who, TJ? Against Josh the Taylor. same Josh Taylor, yes, right. Sir. When they met to unify the titles. Uh, and that took place in the UK. Uh, and now Progre is going back to there because he doesn't really have a lot of options presently. He had signed with Eddie Hearn. Uh, he had regained a title by knocking out Jose Zapata in, a, in an excellent fight. Uh, and then... The wheels fell off. He made a defense at home in New Orleans against Dan Alito Zuria and looked terrible. One of the worst fights you could ever lay eyes on. It was the yep. fault of both guys, but he was lucky to escape with a, a very, very close decision. Uh, just a just a rancid, wretched, horrible fight. So sometimes you're like, you know what? Stuff happens. He talked about being distracted by being at home and all that sort of thing. Okay, you can kind of maybe put that to the side. Now he defends the title, as you mentioned, against Devin Haney. And he didn't just lose the fight, TJ. He didn't compete. He lost 12 rounds to zero. He got knocked down. It was yep. abysmal offensively. It was abysmal in every possible way. He looked slow. He, he just had no firepower. He got dropped by an opponent who is an outstanding boxer in Haney, but certainly not considered a puncher by any means, by anybody. Uh, 
And it was just a terrible performance. So, yeah, he's coming off of a loss. But in the minds of many, he's really coming off of two of the worst offensive fights back to back that you could think of in like recent years. Just just not good. This is, uh, you know, a do or die kind of fight. I don't ever like to like go out on uh, and get like that, you know, officially like this is it. You got to win and the must win, blah, blah, blah. If he wants to stay in main event level fights, that's and right. Have anybody right. think he's got credibility? Regis Progray has to win this fight. Has to win this fight. Uh, Rayfield doesn't think he's going to win this fight. Ah, I was wondering which way we were going. All right. So, what do you think happens? I've been a fan of Regis Progress for a long time since I saw him many years ago fighting on Showbox. Watch him come up through the ranks. Watch him uh, entertain and thrill and 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 show fearlessness and be willing to fight anybody. Uh, tremendous guy to talk to. You know, people can go listen to my interview with him on our podcast a couple episodes ago. Just a, a really uh, frank and straightforward kind of guy. Very entertaining and 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 open open to talk about whatever. Um, so I have nothing but love for Regis Progress. But I feel like. Uh, uh, you know, if it was one horrible performance, I could maybe like put it out of my mind, like the Zuria fight. And even if you didn't think he would beat a Supreme boxer like a Devin Haney to not compete. And it wasn't like there was no injuries that we know about. There was no, you know, dramatic personal upheaval, that sort of sort of thing. It was just a straight out. I got my rear end kicked all over the ring and it was a second fight in a row where he looked terrible. Now he's going overseas to fight a Jack Catterall, who is, uh, I think, still, you know, near the top of his game. Uh, take a look at the way he fought against Taylor in their fights. Take a look uh, again, even though he didn't look awesome in those kind of lower level fights, he still did the job. Anyway, going overseas, being where he's at, you know, Jack is, you know, several years younger than Regis Progre. Uh, he's coming off of a, of a top level victory. The other guy's coming off two horrible performances. I just think that Jack Catterall is going to outbox Regis Progre, going to win a decision. I don't think it's going to be controversial. I don't think it's going to be, you know, super close even. I think this is Jack Catterall win 12. And by that that nature, with the over-under being 10 and a half, I'm taking the over. All right. So you gave a lot of thoughts on that. I think that Progre realizes this is it, to stay relevant. This is not it in terms of he can't continue to fight. But seriously, you're going to be the B-side fighter from here on. In in short term, if you don't win this fight, you're going to be the opponent uh, from here on. I think that matters. I think he he's already be, the opponent in this fight, DJ. That's correct. But, I yeah. mean, I'm talking about even if he's back here in the United States, he's probably the opponent for somebody that's on the way up, uh, et cetera. Talented fighter, and I think he summons it one more time. So let's lock it in. I disagree. I believe Regis Progre wins somehow, some way. Big Dan, too tasty to pass up plus 300 on the money line. I don't have to worry about the KO prop or the decision prop. I just think Regis Progre finds a way to win this fight, and it may even be by stoppage because he's a pretty good puncher. I know I am out on a limb because he did not look good in either one of the last two fights, but I think he summons something. I think he finds a way to win. I got the upset. I got the upset here uh, in this bout. Uh, obviously, if you're match room, you've been kind of grooming Jack Catterall for the title shot. So the last thing you want to see is pro grade to mess that up in a contender I don't fight. That. I don't agree with that at all. They have both guys. Match room would be. Well, I understand that. But I mean, clearly Catterall has the more upside at the moment. I mean, Regis pro has to have this fight to even get back in the conversation. If Catterall gets this fight, I think I think a title a, a title fight is probably next. Looming frame, that's my thought. Uh, yeah, I don't disagree that. with that. I'm just saying I don't think that Matchroom, ha they, they they have both guys, so they'd be happy with either of them winning the fight. There's things that they can do with both, you know. If you got Eddie Hearn in a dark room and said, which one's more marketable to win this fight, he's saying Jack Catterall. I'm just saying. That would, that would uh, maybe be his British roots uh, shining there through. There you go. There you go. All right, so let's I, find I, out I, what I, is going to happen. I knew, like, even before I, when I, before I knew what your pick was, when I saw the number uh, this morning, I knew you were going to go for the sucker plus 300. You think it's just a sucker bet. All right. Well, we'll I, find out. What is no, I don't, I don't mean it like that. I mean, I, I, I've been enticed by that fancy, that tasty number. Yeah. And I, I, uh, I put that out of my that mind. Plus that plus money is very seductive when we're sitting here on the show, especially when you get to like plus 300 plus 400. I'm trying to look back when one of us hit one of these while you're, uh, eschewing my uh my my plus 300 pick i've had a few, I'm trying, had a few. To, I'm trying to see let's see we both 
Uh, we're looking at Nick Ball by decision at plus 375 in his title defense back early this month, but he ended up knocking out Ronnie Rios and getting the stoppage. So we've been tantalized by the plus money in the past. Um, so let's see. Let's see here. We lock it in one more time. This is the main event on Matchroom Boxing Show, Manchester, England. It's Saturday night in England, Saturday afternoon in the U.S. DAZN has it here. DAZN, in fact, worldwide. DAZN has it here on the regular subscription. We love to say, uh, unless they change it and make it a pay-per-view, not a pay-per-view no. uh, here for this fight. Uh, you've got Catterall by decision. I've got Progre on the money line. Daniel wants to know right away, what about Catterall getting the stoppage on the on the knockout prop? You obviously don't believe in that yeah. right now, just one more time. You don't think it's likely. No, I don't think it's likely. And, I mean, look, Jack's a fine boxer, an excellent boxer, but a guy that doesn't even have a 50% knockout ratio. Regis Progre is, uh, other than the knockdown against uh, Devin Haney to the to, – to my mind, I, I can't think of. I'm not saying he's never been down before, but I can't think of one that springs to mind. Certainly, never. Even in the in the Haney knockdown, wasn't hurt. It was a uh, you know uh, kind of a flash kind of knockdown, I guess. Uh, so Regis has always displayed a good chin, and Catterell is not known as a big puncher. So uh, you know, you never know. I mean, anything can happen. But I, I would definitely be shying away from knockout props on a fight like this. All right. Good stuff. So there we go on that bout. We've got one more fight to handicap. We've got your Q&A. You see, kids, we only have two fights today, so that's more time for the questions and answers coming up here in a couple of moments. First, though, let's tell you about a special promotion going on right now from BetUS TV. That is the Trick or Treat on Horror, St on Horror Street promo. You see it right here, our Halloween promo with uh, 13 days of spectacular treats Dan Rayfield oh. including a raffle with an entry to win a sports and casino prize pack from BetUS did I see Chucky come across yeah. I heard you say ooh did I see Chucky come across my screen that kind of scared me there I think I did uh, check out the link that's in the description down below to find out more of the trick or treat on horror street promotion that is going on right now we've got about a week left before the promo is given away Prize packs are given away, and the grand prize is given away on October 31st. Again, find out more of the details at BetUS.com. Also, find out more details through hitting the link in the description down below from BetUS TV and more on Halloween coming up in the q and I'm even in the Halloween colors if you're joining us late, and a lot of audience has joined us here in the last few minutes for sure. All right.